Hi, my name is Peter Resnick, and today we'll be demonstrating how to onboard to Amazon SageMaker Studio, a fully integrated development environment for machine learning. In this demo, we will onboard our AWS account to SageMaker Studio and subsequently open Studio to briefly explore the tool. As we can see, we are at our AWS Management Console homepage. Let's head to our SageMaker service. Now that we're in SageMaker, let's navigate to Studio. We can select Amazon SageMaker Studio from the top left-hand side of the screen. Here we have a few options presented to us. These are options in ways in which we may onboard to SageMaker Studio. So what is onboarding exactly? Onboarding is the process of creating an AWS SageMaker Studio domain for your AWS account within a given region. This domain is created once during onboarding and is what allows users to interact with features in Studio so seamlessly, including fast startup notebooks and one-click notebook sharing. The domain manages active user directories, authorizations, a variety of security, application, and policy configurations, as well as VPC configurations. When a domain is created, SageMaker will also create an Amazon Elastic File System, or EFS, for users to utilize. Each user that is added to the user table in our domain will receive a private home directory within the newly created EFS for notebooks, Git repositories, and data files. The domain acts as a private development environment that enables users to access SageMaker Studio's IDE and manage their data science development workflows. Once the onboarding process is completed and a domain is created, the process of adding new users is quite simple, a click of a few buttons. Let's explore. We have two options for getting started with our SageMaker Studio domain, quick start and standard setup. When considering which path is best for onboarding to Studio, the main consideration is configuration requirements. Quick start will build a domain for us automatically. But if we believe we need more control over our data science development environment, we can choose standard setup. This will give us more acute configuration capabilities over our authentication method, either AWS SSO or AWS IAM, permissions associated to our execution role, notebook sharing configurations, network and storage, and any tags that we may want to apply. Regardless of which option we choose, we'll see the added benefits of Studio's fast start notebooks and super easy access to Studio features, autopilot, model monitor, debugger, experiments, and endpoint management. These features are backwards compatible, so they can certainly be used in classic notebooks. We just have the ease of implementation advantage here, since these features are right at our fingertips in Studio. In addition, we can scale our notebook environments and our compute separately, since they are decoupled. From a billing perspective, we'll have more control over costs, since billing will occur from usage and not uptime. These are all great benefits of using SageMaker Studio. The streamlined access to development tools makes SageMaker Studio an incredibly efficient tool for teams looking to leverage an end-to-end -end data science development workflow. Please note that SageMaker Studio currently limits domains to one per account per region. Our Studio domain will manage interactions between the users themselves and the EC2 instance that will support the compute resources. Users can be added and removed from the account domain as necessary. Currently, there's eight users per domain. Let's create and explore a domain. If you choose to use Quick Start, SageMaker will handle configuring the account and setting the permissions that you or a team in your organization need to use Studio. Note that this will use standard encryption, which cannot be changed. We'll assume that for this demo, we need more control over the configuration parameters and we want to use a standard setup. First up, we'll choose an authentication method. We have two options, AWS Single Sign-On or AWS Identity and Access Management. Both tools can be used by development teams and are perfectly acceptable choices, but some teams may prefer one over the other. AWS SSO is a centrally managed single sign-on service for accessing AWS accounts and applications. Importantly, to use SSO, we need an SSO account set up in our AWS region that supports Amazon SageMaker Studio. We do not have an SSO set up within this account, so we cannot utilize that option. But if we prefer SSO, we can click the provided link and set up an account. For now, we'll utilize AWS IAM as our authentication method. 
In this case, Studio users will access the tool through the SageMaker console and not a bookmark URL, which would be the case with AWS SSO. On to permissions. Similar to classic notebooks, we'll need to select an execution role for Studio to utilize. This execution role allows Studio to take actions on our behalf. We can select one of our available roles, denoted by timestamps, or we can create a new one. Generally, it is best to defer to newer roles as they will incorporate any new features that have been released. For now, let's create a new one. We can configure this role by either allowing the role access to any S3 bucket, specific S3 buckets, or no S3 buckets within our account. We'll leave our default setting of any S3 bucket selected for now since this will add more flexibility, but if specification is required, please go ahead and enter the names of the buckets that will be accessed separated by commas. Let's create the role. On to sharing. Here we can determine whether or not we'd like to allow our users to share notebook resources. This will include related artifacts, such as cell outputs and Git repositories. We can learn more by clicking this link. Since we want to create a collaborative data science development environment, we'll leave notebook sharing resource enabled. Studio will define a default S3 location for the resources to be stored, but if we'd like, we can choose our own. We'll leave this as default for now. Next, we will configure whether or not encryption should be used when sharing our notebook. Let's assume we have sensitive data in our notebooks or artifacts, and we want to proceed with encryption to add another layer of security to our ML environment. We can choose a KMS key from our dropdown if available, which we have from our demo, or if we want to create a new one, we can navigate to the AWS KMS service and create a new entity there. Our last notebook sharing configuration parameter is output sharing. This determines whether or not users will be able to share the output of any cells. We'll leave this as allow, but for now, please discuss with your admin team to determine if there are any restrictions on notebook sharing in its entirety. Now we'll configure network and storage. We have the option to attach a VPC or virtual private cloud to our domain, which will add another layer of security to our environment. A VPC allows us to provision off a section of the cloud that is logically isolated. This means that our area of the cloud would be cut off from the broader cloud environment, enhancing our control over security. Let's assume the nature of our business dictates that a VPC is required. Let's select one here. We'll subsequently select a subnet and security group. Let's talk about subnets. First, what is a subnet? A subnet is a specified CIDR block within your VPC, and more importantly, a subnet provides entirely within one availability zone, which differentiates it from the broader VPC resource, which spans multiple availability zones. If a selected subnet has traffic that is routed to an internet gateway, we refer to that as a public subnet. If we create a subnet that does not have access to the internet, we refer to that as a private subnet. Here we'll be using a public subnet so that we can pull down public repositories and packages as we would like. The last thing we'll decide on is a security group. Security groups are essentially a virtual firewall that can control incoming and outgoing network traffic, controlled by rules. When we specify a subnet and a security group, we allow SageMaker to create elastic network interfaces, or ENIs, that are associated with our subnet. ENIs allow our model containers to connect to resources in our VPC. Lastly, we have the option to add tags. Tags are custom key value pairs that can be added as attributes to our Studio domain. Please check with your organization to determine if there are tagging standards already set within your AWS environment. For now, we'll use my tag and value of tag for demonstration purposes. Perhaps your business may utilize business unit as a key and operations as a value. These are unique from organization to organization. Once we are ready to submit a domain for our account, either via quick start or standard setup, we can simply hit submit and SageMaker Studio will begin to create a domain for our account.
This is a one-time process that may take a few moments, but will ultimately allow us quick access to our notebooks, Git repos, and data moving forward. That's how quick it is to onboard and start to use SageMaker Studio. The expectation is that the administration teams will likely be handling the onboarding process in SageMaker Studio, such that when new users are ready to begin their machine learning development projects, they can simply be added as a user of the domain and have quick and easy access to all of SageMaker's great new features, without the requirements to configure and start notebooks on a case-by-case -case basis. This will help streamline development cycles and allow data science teams to focus on development and not setup. Awesome. We have successfully created a SageMaker Studio domain and can begin to use the tool. We can see in our control panel that we have no users added yet. Once we have a user, we'll be able to explore Studio in more depth. To create a user, we are simply going to select. We'll quickly be prompted to give a name to our user. Again, please discuss with the business if there's any naming standard that should be followed. For now, let's give this user a name, Studio Demo User. Similarly to the broader Studio domain, we'll need to provide this user an execution role. We'll use the one we've recently created, but you can alternatively create a new one following the same procedure we utilized during the onboard. Now we hit submit, and just like that, Studio will create a new user for us. This user can now open the Studio IDE. Now we can select Open Studio to be taken to our integrated development environment. And just like that, we're in a Jupyter environment and can begin our data science development work. We won't be exploring all that notebooks in Studio have to offer, but please view additional resources on all the wonderful tools available for data science developers within Studio. We will, however, take a quick look at a few ways to help get you up and running. Let's create a notebook. We'll be prompted to select a kernel for our notebook. The Python 3 data science kernel is often a good place to start, but if you know you'd like to utilize a notebook that is more specialized, perhaps for TensorFlow or PyTorch, or GPU or CPU, you can make that selection here. We'll go with Python 3 data science for now. Let's hit select. Just like that, we have a notebook ready for our use. Just as in classic notebooks, we can attach a Git repository. We simply do so through a different, easier means. If we select Git from our top-down menu, we see we have a few immediate options, including initializing and cloning a repo. Let's clone a repo. We are prompted to enter the URI of a repository. Since we are in SageMaker, a repository we may like to have is the SageMaker examples repo. So let's add that repository now by entering the URI. We'll copy and paste that. And hit clone. Just like that, we can see that SageMaker Studio has begun the cloning process and we can begin to see new files appear. This repository includes a ton of great examples using Studio features such as Autopilot, Debugger, and Model Monitor. While that clone is being performed, we'll explore the left-hand side of the SageMaker Studio UI. We'll notice that we have a few options. We begin in our folder directory, denoted by the folder. This is where we can view files and data available to us. We also have the option to create new folders, or upload data. Below that, we have our Sessage Manager. Here we can view terminals, kernels, and images that are running. We also have our Git menu, which can help give us more information on any Git controlled resources that we may have in our notebook. We have our palette of commands, which can provide a ton of functionality for us, like restarting kernels or links out to FAQs and references. We then have our experiments, which will help us understand and manage any experiments that we're running in Studio. We won't do that today, but experiments are a great new feature. We have our notebook tools, which help us manage notebook-specific options and notebook metadata, seen here in advanced tools. We have our endpoints and open tabs. If we prefer to use a command line to perform other tasks, such as cloning a repository, we can certainly do that. We can open a terminal by going to File, New, and selecting Terminal. We now see we have another tab where we can perform tasks. We can make a dir. If we go back to our folder structure and refresh, we can see we've made our test directory. 
If we'd like, we can navigate to our SageMaker examples repo and grab one of the examples available to us, Autopilot for instance. And just like that, we have a notebook we can walk through. We'll select our kernel, Python 3 Data Science, and launch. If we are done using Studio, we can close our notebooks by going to our file and choosing to close and shut down a notebook. We'll be asked to confirm that we do indeed want to shut down the notebook. We'll go ahead and select OK. We can also close out our terminals or other tabs by simply collecting the X. Let's navigate back to our control panel. If we want to remove a user from the SageMaker Studio domain entirely, we can do so from here by clicking the user and selecting Delete User. We'll notice that at this point, this option is not available to us. Importantly, this can only be done if the user has no available apps. We can see in our apps table that there are two apps running. We'll need to go ahead and delete those, and then we can delete the user. To delete an app, simply choose Delete App. Studio will give us some information to be aware of before we delete our app. As we can see, this action will delete the app. Any data and work that is saved in the Studio Notebook and Home Directory will be unaffected. Unsaved work, however, will be lost. If you believe there is unsaved work, please go back into your app and save all work. If we want to delete, we can confirm yes, delete app, and again, we can type in delete to verify our action, and finally select delete we can see that our app is deleting. We'll go ahead, go ahead and perform that same action for our other app. Yes, delete, delete, delete. At this point, SageMaker Studio is removing the apps from our user. Once these apps have been deleted, we'll have the option to delete our user. Now that our apps have been deleted, we can see that the delete user option is now available to us. We'll select Delete User. Again, we'll have to confirm. We'll notice that this will delete the user from Studio and they will lose access to their data and notebooks. Please be aware of repercussions in all applications of deleting a user. We do want to delete this user. We'll confirm by typing in Delete and hitting Delete. We can see that SageMaker is working on deleting this user for us. Once the user is deleted, we'll have the option to delete Studio entirely. We may want to do this if we want to move from SSO to AIM or vice versa. We'll have to remove all users and then we'll have the option to delete the Studio. This will remove the underlying domain. Please understand the implications of removing a domain and how that affects all notebooks, data, and artifacts. We can see that our user is now deleted and we have the option to delete Studio. Again, we'll be asked to confirm that this is the action we want to do. Yes, we do want to delete Studio. We'll confirm by typing in delete, and we'll delete our Studio domain. Please understand all implications of removing a domain and how that affects the underlying notebooks, data, and artifacts. Traditionally, this would only be performed by an administration team. Please consult with your IT department or business before performing such actions. We've now learned how to onboard our account to Amazon SageMaker Studio, configure the setup of Studio using standard procedures if we need more control than the Quick Start option, we've learned how to add users to our Studio domain, launch the Studio IDE, and explore some of the great features available to us. We've learned how to stop Studio apps, delete users, and ultimately delete a domain if we require that action. Happy developing!